Today I'm speaking with a wonderful guest. I have John Foster with me and he is not only a renowned radio host, he's also a paranormal investigator in his own right. John retired about 20 years ago and after a number of prompts found his way to me and he's now opened a streaming site for people like myself who discuss the alternative subjects as many of us are being moved off um, YouTube and a, a number of other sites. I'll be talking about that later on with John. But I wanted to start with how we met, the strange serendipities that came into play, the fact that now he believes in the Fed, and what happened when he exposed Most Haunted. As I say, I'm with John Foster today, the renowned paranormal investigator and the host of Haunted Cornwall FM, which you can find on a Sunday evening between 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. on Penwith Radio. And I will add a link to that in the description below. Myself and John got together in a very strange, serendipitous way um, when an old gentleman made a suggestion to you that led you to me. <laughs> Do you mind telling us a little bit about that, John? Right, I've been out of the paranormal for basically 20 years, all right? And we had a video call, and both of them turned around and said, look, we've got to make what we're on now, believe it or not, we've got to make it paranormal. And I went, why? And I said, well, that's your passion, that's everything. I said, but what about my music? He says, forget the music. You need to be back in the paranormal. And then the day after that, I was walking, I think I've gone fishing or something, and this old boy come up to me and says, what are you doing your music for? When I say old, he was only like 45, 50, or like, not old. And I said, what do you mean? He says, you should be back in the paranormal. In any case, I turned round and turned back. He disappeared. So I went, okay. And then... Something happened where I had to talk to you. I think I was on YouTube when you oh, came. Oh, yeah, up. I asked if I could use your podcast. Yeah, yeah, that was it. I yeah. didn't walk you up. Yes, you did. <laughs> um, Which is fine. Was added, and it, sound, it seemed like even more definite to do it. Hmm. And then I got back from Devon on Sunday, Sunday afternoon. I put the TV on, and what come up? You with the big, your Bigfoot things. And I'm like, what more can you say? You know, <laughs> what more can you say? I think it's been serendipitous for the pair of us because honestly, I normally have my phone on silent when I because I work strange hours. So if I'm working with the um, if Russia, Japan, it can be middle of the night. So I always had my phone on silent and that morning I didn't. Um, and I, I, he let me go back to sleep and then I did message him back as soon as I woke up and explained why I was um, asleep in the morning when everybody else is up. But you've got a new project called Combo Box TV and I'm really excited about it. Being a podcaster and a YouTuber, more and more sites like mine, being forced off mainstream media so they don't want us discussing the subjects that you and i discuss so combo box tv is a really good way that you can get in touch with other people who have the same interest as you there is a chat option available you can watch videos you can listen to podcasts you can read articles from lots of people who are experts in the field like myself and john so i put a link into it below pop over to that link and have a look at it and if you're interested in adding your stuff on there i can put you in touch with john or you can get in touch with john directly i had a look and i was really really i really enjoyed that site it's very rare that i sit down with a cup of tea and read anything and i did yesterday afternoon i actually sat down with a cup of tea and i read the articles and i know everything about british bigfoot but there was one or two articles in there that even i didn't know so if John hadn't have come up with this idea, they would have passed me by. And I'm sure it's going to be the same for everybody else. But you started as a paranormal investigator with not much inclination into the Fae. You wasn't really a believer of the Fae, were you? Of the Fae? Yeah, the fairy folk, the wee folk. No, I won't. Yeah. Well, they popped up an awful fire, you? you had a conversation, didn't you, with your friend? Not yesterday, day before. To tell her about me. <laughs> I got it on video last night. 
Oh, did you video it? How did it go? It's John meets with uh, Jade and Mark and the Fay folk. You Oh, came up in that quite a lot. I, I did tell you I would, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, you did actually. You came up here quite a lot. The elder came through Lisa, uh, Jade, mm -hmm. right, and said Jade had gone back home and she was sat reading your thing of talking to trees and things like that. The elder absolutely loved that. Absolutely loved it. But I haven't put it up yet. No, no, I know, I know. I don't blame you. All right. But I did. It does take a bit of believing because getting the Fae actually coming through to somebody and talking through them. But I managed to get out when they first came here, how their hierarchy works, uh, the different kinds of Fae, Yeah. what they actually do, what they want to do, what they want from us. And then I said, well, well, what do you want from me? And that just blew me away. And I actually just went, oh, am I going to do that? We'll find a way. <laughs> oh, yeah, we will. We will find a way. Something I never do online, John, is show people my tattoos. But I am actually, I work with elements. Elements are my thing. That's how I connect to the thing. So I actually have the elements all over my body. I have them tattooed everywhere. Yeah. Because for me, that's how I connect. That's my little blood sacrifice that I do. Strange way to call it. I know, but that's kind of what it is. When I get tattooed, I put a lot of intention into it. And I ask, what's my next step? Where, you know, where do you want me to go next? Um, and the Fae bring me a lot of comfort, I'm going to be honest. When I was little, that's all I ever heard. Oh, she's away with the fairies. Oh, it's just our Deb, she's away with the fairies. It was kind of a way of of shaming me, really, for the things that were going on around me. But you understand that as an experience of yourself. You were only about eight years old when it first happened for you, weren't you? Yeah, I laid in bed at half past one in the morning, half one, two o'clock, something like that. And my auntie was sat on the corner of the bed. Uh, she was clear as day, clear as we are to each other. Mm. And we're just yapping away, and mum come in and she goes, who are you talking to? I said, my auntie, she's there. And she goes, don't be stupid, she lives 80 to 100 miles away. And at that moment, the phone rang, she died an hour before. So she's come to see you, hasn't she? She's come yeah. to What she went. Yeah. I actually I spoke to a chap the other day, um, and I meant to tell you about it. I forgot yesterday. But same thing for him. Connor, his name is. Um, I interviewed him recently. He was really close to grandma. So his first experience was grandma being in the home. Um, and he went downstairs and asked mum and dad, like, how come grandma's in? And he said, no, no, she's not. And the phone rang and grandma had passed away. And I said to him, you're incredibly lucky to have had that moment. You know, lots of us wish for that that goodbye moment. Yeah. You must be incredibly in tune, John. You must be very, very in tune for that to have happened. That I can't say. I mean, people say I am. I don't know if I am or not. But I must admit, I did pick up the elder straight away when I first yeah. started talking to Jade. So I asked her, who's the old one right behind you? And she went, oh, that's Belle, she's about 500 year old. I went, no, the older one. Mm. And she was, I think she said she was 15,000 years old. So if that's what you call she did in then yes. I believe that we were robbed of that when we our, our early traditions and cultures were taken from us because we live in an island and we've been invaded many, many times over the millennia. But I think that was as natural to us back then as breathing. I think we were connected to the elementals like this, always. I think we've always walked back side by side. And I'm a great believer in ground energy and the Earth's magnetic grid. I think that plays in a great deal into a lot of phenomena. And I often wonder if we are all experiencing the same thing, we're just seeing it differently. So for me, it's easy to kind of tune in, not tune into the fable, except that they're there. They're there, they're dead easy. But there's people out there who don't, it just feel like it doesn't happen. I mean, <clears throat> very famous case, Fern Britain. Everybody knows Fern Britain. Yeah. You, you, you know, she, you'd take her word of law, wouldn't you? She saw three little men running up um, like a little farm lane 
And she looked away and when she looked back, they were pheasants. And she said, I still don't know if that was me really seeing them or it was a trick of the light. They can be tricksters when they want to be. How, what was your conversation with them last night? What was, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, God. But when you spoke to um, last night, when you were the Fae were around, what yeah. was it like? Um, how do you describe it? I would say peaceful, but it was peaceful yet not peaceful. Uh, very, very high energy. Mm. And poor Jade had to stop after, I think, 40 minutes. 40, 45 wow. minutes she managed. And yeah. That's for awesome. a while, because she was exhausted. Yeah. And where she's autistic and disabled, yeah, it makes it really difficult for her. But she had five, ten minutes, then came back and did another 20 minutes. Wow. So, but we're going to do a series on it with the Fae. Yeah. You know, but there's going to be different Fae coming through, as long as the elders there and the other one she's got is one called Bell. As yeah. long as both of them are there, and her uncle Mark is there, who's Cherokee Indian, very, very tuned. Right, they right. Protect her and give her strength and things like that. If you need my energy, just give me a shout, you know, and I'll be there if you need me. Why not? I don't mind, I don't mind at all. You know me, I'm all for pushing forward. If we can normalise this conversation, John, make it normal for people who experience it, it won't be as hard as it was for me, for the other ones coming forward. Not if it's done properly. Mm -hmm. uh, can't, you know what my views are in any case, sir. I agree with you, you're right. There's a lot of misinformation out there. Me and you touch on the satanic panic quite often, don't we? Yeah. The demonising of everything, the negative of everything, slight tap on the wall or a... <gasps> and away they run. Down, 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 down. We're not going there again. No way. <laughs> Otherwise, you know what will happen. <laughs> we'll just go off on tangents. I don't mind. We'll go on a tangent at the end if they, if they like. We'll, we'll, I'll keep it in at the end and we can tell them the truth of all of it. <laughs> you know, we, we both had experiences with paranormal investigators and teams that you just knew we're not being honest, you know. And you, as a, as a, um, an honest person, you feel that if you don't come forward with that, you're kind of helping them with it. You, you're facilitating it, aren't you? So to be a whistleblower is not an easy pos position to be in. But like you, I don't care. If you come to me and you lie, a picture. If you come to me and you hope, so don't want to know, don't care. Not put my energy into it. Couldn't give a monkeys, Yeah. The real people are the ones that really need our help, the ones that are out there, A, trying to maybe just manage a skill set they don't know they have. A lot of um, people have this feeling in the chest and they mistake it for anxiety or nerves or tension, and I tend to say to them, lean into that a little bit. That's your body telling you something. That's your senses. Your peripheral senses are picking up on something. Learn to start to trust that. It will not let you down, you know. Very true. Mm. I mean, you've got far more experience in the paranormal realm than I have. Mine's like this, yours is like this. So. I mean, every time I go into a building that is active, my chest feels like it's caving in. Right. And I go, here we go. Yeah, And even that's if I'm switched off. Yeah. <clears throat> really, that's great. Mm. But I've never seen a demon. No, no, I know, I know what you mean. I've seen some shadow beings, but I think I know what they are. Are they demons? No. No. <clears throat> no, they're not. I think they're some kind of negative energy. Kind of. I, I see them, John. I've been plagued by them my entire life, <clears throat> I'll be honest. Mm. I can't remember where we were, but we were up somewhere in Lancaster, or Lancashire, sorry. Mm -hmm. And it was a manor house. They had like four, four or five stone bridges going along that the Druids had built. It was a big Druid area. And it took hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Right. They built the bridges. And we got followed by a big black dog at the top of the hill that just followed us all the way down. 
and you had children there singing, what was it? Ring a ring a roses and all that lot. Right. Uh, so, and then we found out, I uh, can't remember who picked it up now, Sue, I think, that there's kids buried here. There was loads of kids buried there. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, but that was the only place I've ever felt apprehensive. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. And the real place ever I've been physically put on my back. Bloody hell. It was that strong. Yeah, it was that strong. And I've got to give Sue a due. I mean, Sue's very, very placid. She's spiritual medium, very, very placid. She went for it, big style. Yeah, the three of them dragged me out and got me back to the manor house. I said, I'm fine, leave me alone. I went back to help Sue. Yeah, but that's the only time I've ever had it. And I can't for the life of me think of a place. Sue would tell it. Yeah, it, it'll come to you. Yeah, it'll come to you later on. I've had two like that. One was in Yorkshire, but that was because the spirit was a young girl, and I think I've not. It, it's rare for me to actually have something come over me. I'm that strong normally that I can keep it at bay. I'm like, yeah, I can yeah. turn it off. But I couldn't with her. I couldn't with her. The second I was within about three mile of where we were heading, she was in the car. And she was physically screaming in my ear. And I was banging on the window and shouting. Not me. I wasn't shouting. She was shouting. And my, me and my husband don't have arguments. And we appreciate each other greatly. But that day we did. And he said, Debbie, I can't drive like this. But for that moment, I wasn't, Debbie. I was so determined to get my story out there that it just she just flooded over me. And it, it, it frightened me a bit because I couldn't push her off. You know, but she was no in, in in no way a negative spirit. She wasn't a demon or anything like that. She just waited since the 17th century to have a story told, the truth told. And it, in comes me like a big shining beacon. And she's gone, she'll understand, you know. And she did. She did, poor lass. In fact, she was a Quaker girl. And she they told everybody that she died pregnant. And that really, really, really stayed with her all those years centuries because to her that would have been such a smirch on her family yeah and I, actually her mum refused to bury her her mum walked away and said she wouldn't bury her so the strange thing with it was they took her up to the mill at Lona and just laid her out in the mill and when they brought people in to see if she'd gone she'd gone and the clothes that she were wearing were gone and every year for 16 years a man died in that spot hmm yeah, until a cleansing was done. I mean, it's something we can talk about on Thursday night if you want when we, we have our Zoom call. Kitty Braithwaite, she was called. Seventeen. Hutton La Hole. Never got over that one, John. Never got over that one. Even found the lady from the mill whose family bought the mill when the Kitty was taken in there. Um, and the landlord at the local pub said, sometimes of an evening you can see wet footprints on the flagstones. Oh, mm. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you all the details. I'll send you details afterwards. Might be something you want to have a, a look into. Yeah, I need help on the kitty one because I couldn't... I'm not experienced enough. Do you get what I mean? And we, I need someone like you or like Jane to go see her. That would be interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think it would. There's more of a story there to tell. There's a lot better ones than me. A lot better. A mm. knock that you'll be talked to firstly is phenomenal. Well, if we have the conversation with them, hopefully they'll be able to pick up on her. We did a live um, question and answer session, if you want, and then followed by a live invest in mm. just outside of Penzance in a pub. Right. Mark's talking to this woman. He goes, Sorry, I've got to leave you. And that's all he did. He went out of the pub. A couple of minutes later, he's come back in with this woman, sat her down on the table, said, can she have a brandy? Right? I went, what are you doing? At that minute, her phone went. Her husband had just been killed in a car on a motorbike accident. Mark picked it up and got her in. He is phenomenal. I would like to shake that man's hand. I'd love to feel his energy. He's awesome. 
It's not easy, though. I mean, people think it's easy. Think, oh, it's dead easy. But sometimes that's hard to, to know something that's going to happen and have no control over it whatsoever at yeah. all, you know. Just Kane is a chap I want to introduce you to. He's um, 72. I had a dream on a Thursday night that he was smashed his car up, got his leg caught in the manifold, was drowning in a river. Sunday afternoon, 2 o'clock, it happened. Car went into the river, Buxton. Him and his wife are in it. His leg's trapped, can't get out. River's filling up. So this army of women arrived from nowhere. Fire, ambulance, brigade, TA, the whole nine yards, right? Impossible. Impossible. They jump in, they get his wife out, get her on bank. He's still in there. His leg's trapped, they can't get him out. So air helicopter's coming in. An hour and a half, they had to hold him above water to get him out. And that entire time, there's a man stood with Jackie on the bank, just keeping her comfort, keeping her okay. Oh. They get him out, they get into hospital. Next day, police come. Well, next time he's compassed, the police come. And the copper says to him, just can't get a read on this, he said. Your accident was at quarter past two. And at two o'clock, somebody phoned it in. 15 minutes before it happened, somebody phoned 999 that a car had gone into the, through the wall and into the river. <laughs> Um, get a stranger. So his wife obviously wants to thank everyone. Jackie wants to thank everyone. And they do. But they can't find this man that stood with her. So they ask everyone. They ask the copper, the ambulance crew, the whole nine yards. Nobody saw him. Nobody other than Jackie and Kane saw that man stood with them. And how he survived that crash, I will never know. Because I've got photographs of the car and it is just crumpled to a square it's just like how they made it out of that I will never know and as I'm interviewing him talking about it orbs start coming over his shoulder so I managed to catch them on camera and then I thought he's more than this and I asked him and he started to tell me about all of his other experiences so um but he's like I say he's, he's 72 and he's only just realizing that this is him. He's the catalyst to all of this that's going on. You know, he's the message board kind of thing, you know. So it's been nice kind of getting him on the right path and watching him run with it. Yeah. It's about the same age as Mark. It's a good age to be, isn't it? You, you don't point getting older if you don't get wiser. I'm not older. I'm no, I mean, Mark, us, as, you know, in general, there's no point us getting older, is it, if we're not getting wiser? Oh, I think more wise to get yet. No, no, you still got your luscious locks like me. <laughs> I mean, I was watching some of your videos, um, obviously, and I put them on the end of this interview for anybody that wants to watch them. I mean, you were talking, one of them, what were you talking? And it's uh, there's a, a panel of you, and you're just chatting backwards and forwards about what it's like to be a paranormal investigator, you know, and I really enjoyed that. Um, and there was a chap on the end, I didn't catch his name. I got it. Yeah, dark haired chap. And he was, I just like the way you put everything across. It was really in layman's terms. And I thought even I could understand that. So I would suggest for anyone watching this, if you're interested in expanding your gifts in any way, watch those videos and get in touch with John because he can put you in touch with all of these people, can't you? Yeah. You know? Well, I can't with Pagar anymore. No. Because you're all coming out of retirement, aren't you? You're starting again. <sighs> No, oh, do we have to? Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. We've got a lot to do. Have you seen it left in my list? We've got to do all it. <laughs> oh, no, 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 yeah, cock we are. Yeah, we've got to, haven't we? We've got to. We, I mean, I'm, I'm married to a Cornish man. So my husband wants to go to Cornwall this summer because he didn't know where he was from. And now he's had his DNA test, he knows where oh, he's from. Neither did I. Yeah, so we're heading down that way. Devon and Cornwall, both of his families. Where oh, the name Atswell's from? Mm -hmm. Devon. No, Cornwall <laughs> is my family's home, which on my mum's side. How do I know? Weird. We went. I went down to Cornwall for work. Blah blah blah. We stayed there eighteen, nineteen years in Campbell. They're just out for a drive. Uh, now my mother's maiden name is Oakey. Right. Right, and driving down this thing, saw Oaky Road. Oh, what? Drove along it to the cemetery then, just for Oakies. Oh, where you've got me joking. And yeah, it's all my family. Well, my mother's family. Yeah, your mum's family. That it, Max? Me. 
But he's the same. He thought he was northwest, all all oh, northwest. I don't think so. I'm a Yorkshireman. No, I know it's strange, isn't it? He his family came from Devon. You see him go to Walthamstow in London, and they're in the, the workhouse there. And then his granddad pops up, probably 14, 15, up here in Northwest. Um, marries a lass and marks the grandchild of that. So he, he's never been. I've been to Kevin, Devon and Carl. I absolutely love it. He's never been. So I said to him, that's what we're doing this summer. That's what we're doing. We're having a road trip. We're coming down. So he can visit all of the, the little towns and villages that his, his relatives are from. Thought that'd be good for him. And like your lovely lady, he's my rock. Yeah, I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for him because he's the one that does all of the behind the scenes stuff so I can do me Deborah Hatswell stuff. Um, people, Somebody had the cheat once to call him the tea boy. <laughs> they have no idea what that man does for me. I have to walk in this house doing clearings of some of the most negative energy known to man. And if I didn't have him, I'd be a raving lunatic. Because yeah. he knows how to take me through that process of getting that off, you know. He'll, he'll just suddenly drag me out of a crowd and say, no, come on, shoes off, come on. And he can see that it's taking over and he'll just, he knows me like nobody else knows me, you know. And you have the same relationship with your lovely lady, don't you? Uh, yeah, I suppose the best. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Oh, I'm, I'm in a minute, you're going to see a big elbow coming. <laughs> <aren't you? laughs> Exactly. You'd be bloody lost without her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Too right. Yeah, you would. So, are we going to touch on the negativity of the paranormal world? Or shall we just swap some more of your amazing stories? Because you have the best stories in all honesty. I could just I say, well, I'm them. trying to keep calm so I don't overrule you with my energy today. No. We were we were energy drunk yesterday, me and you, weren't we? A pair of us. Oh, Absolutely. Right. I got to be honest. When I sat, when you said to me, "Oh, Deb, it, it, it stopped," I thought, "What are they playing at?" That's twice they stopped me talking to him. Is it too soon? Is it something they need to tell him? I'm, I'm jumping the gun with him. And then I messaged you, said, "No, I don't think it's too soon, but I think I need there's something I'm going to hear tonight." And I said to you, "Didn't I think there might be a message for me in that?" Um, What's a message for you personally. But right. I'll send you the video before I put it up. Right. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, if you don't well, mind. The link because I can't, it's weird, I can't get it onto combat. Right. So I've got it up on YouTube as driver. Mm. So I've got, I'm hoping I can do it from the, the URL. Yeah. Right. But Scott, my webmaster, will have to do that. Okay. Mm. But I can give you the URL where you can go and have a listen. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a private thing, so it's not live on YouTube or anything else, but it is, but it's private. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't mind. I don't mind. Okay. You know me, I'm transparent. And then I'll wait for the phone call. Right. <laughs> I'll wait for the phone call. I'll wait for the phone call. People tell me that. I don't mind. You've got to be honest, though, when two people get together like me and you, the energy ramps up around them, ramps up existentially, doesn't it? It yeah. just, you know. I'm so relaxed after speaking with you yesterday. It was because you put me through um, a little, um, it was like a meditation, really, for me. And luckily, we caught the audio of it. So I've got all of the audio of it. And I sat down and I redid it and I redid it. So I was giddy yesterday. It was really nice. I got to visit my dad again. You know, I got to find out what my spirit animal was. And that's only from meeting you. I wouldn't have known those things. I was in fountain for you. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I knew, I knew who he was. The second I put that dog in my arms, I knew who he was, you know, and I've met him before and I knew him. I just knew him. And then when we got to the gate, it was Sarah and John again. It's always Sarah and John for me, my great, 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 great grandparents. Um, they're from Winter Hill this way. And they were waiting for me as I went into that cottage. Oh. And my dad was sat in, in the rocking chair in the corner doing his fishing, sorting his fishing gear out. And there was just so many of them, so many of them. And I was like, Dad. And he went, oh, are you? You know, it was just as normal as if I'd walked into my mum's. You know, it was like walking into my mum's. And he was just like, oh, are you, Dad? 
And then I just had a really good hug with everyone and, oh, the, the energy. And then you, you brought me out of it and I was like, I don't want to go. I didn't want to go. I took you further into it first. Yeah, yeah. And then you took me downstairs and just that renewal of energy. So last night I actually sat in the garden and did that again. Did you? Yeah, I did. I went back through it and I sat down and I did the rainbow light again and I got a lot from it. I really did. So I think I'm going to add that in and just use that as part of my daily protection. It's a really easy ritual to do. Very simple to go through the steps and enjoyable. Like bloody, it was like, um, I don't know, like like walking around the corner and there's suddenly someone from your family that you've not seen for years and you're just like, oh. Ah, yeah, it's been so long since I've seen you. And the fact that my dad was just busy doing his fishing tackle, you know, where's that noisy Deb? Just ignored Deb, like, and carried on doing what he was doing. It was lovely. I was just like... Sorry for laughing, but I've been saying, OK, I've got wigs to make up for mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But or I'd suggest anyone that wants to go through it, just watch the video at the end and go through it. It was lovely. I really, really enjoyed it. And I've, I've spent a lifetime, me and John, being frightened of the paranormal because that's what I was taught, to be frightened of it, all of it. Anything I sense, anything I feel, anything I catch on the peripheral is, is bad, is evil, is, you know, I'm met playing with fire and all of that. So I had it indoctrined into me that what I was doing was wrong. So even helping people, I used to do it, nobody knows. Not a lot of people know about my paranormal work online. I don't, it's not something I do, it's not something I film. Um, getting rid of that short cloak of shame yeah. took me a long time. What's no. Mum, mum had abilities. Gran had abilities. Gran had abilities. So did my dad. Just wasn't something you discussed outside the family. It was covered up. Um, saw my mum in two places at once when I was a kid. At about seven. Um. And she shout. we lived in a tall block of flats. She shouted me in for me tea and I didn't want to go in. So what I'd do is I'd run up the next lot of stairs. So she'd come out, look for me, and she'd just go back in flat. So that's what I did. I ran up the stairs and she'd come out. And I thought, oh, Jesus. So I hid like this and she went downstairs. And I thought, right, I'll run in now. So she's got to come back upstairs, hasn't she? And as I ran in the kitchen, she went in the kitchen doing tea. And I was like... Mm. So there's a, it's not something we talked about in our family. It was like, no, no, we're not discussing that. No, no, don't tell anyone that. And just raise that it was something to be ashamed of. Oh, I don't know. Hang on a minute. Did you lose a cat, by the way, while you've been with me? Yeah. Right. You were out last night. I went up to Barker. And a cat came hurtling up the stairs behind me into the bathroom. Went well, there when I got there. And all three cats were out. Oh. I'm for a visit. I see, I see animal spirit. I don't see human spirit. It's very rare, That's but right. animals. Except for the panther, obviously, from your cat. Yeah. My big cat. But that's a different aspect. Yeah. That's love bond, John. That's a love bond, isn't it? Yeah. No, that's the dreams, isn't it? Yeah. To be, to my, I would like to sit down with all of my relatives and have a conversation with them and ask them, "Am I doing the right thing? Am I on the right track?" I spend a lot of my time when I go up Winter Hill. That's what I do. I just commune with them and say, "Right, where's next? What do I do next? You know, or, I've hit this wall. How do I get round this wall?" And, it's uh, you sent you had some photos that you sent across to me, yeah. and I was really interested in the exoplasm. Um, I've got a number of photos me over the years where I call what I call my mist. So I can take a series of photos, and they'll, they'll all be fine. And, and one of them is full of this white mist. Yeah. And I tried to send you some yesterday. I'm not sure whether you got them or not. Um, no. Right, well, I'll send them via email. My Wi-Fi signal is awful, so I, if I send them by email, we'll get them. Use, um, use the email. Use johnbrockyourgmail.com. Yeah, I will. I'll send it on that. Just 
I never thought of it as ectoplasm, really. It's a word I've only associated with Victorian medium, so I had to go and look it up and see what it meant. Um, and I've got a number of them, yeah. as as I've, as I've my mum. I've got photos of my mum, same, with this kind of mist. Very white, very smoky and white. Yeah, I can't see it with my eye, and I can't see it on all of the photographs. It'll just appear on some of them. So what is it, John? What is ectoplasm? Personally, I don't think the mist is ectoplasm. Right. I think, quite honestly, I'm seeing if I've got some on here. It depends how far it goes back. Hmm. It's when I lost the whole of my Facebook account, all the pictures disappeared. Right. I know. Well, yeah, that happens, doesn't it? Yeah. Tech problems with the paranormal. But yeah, I, I, I didn't just didn't know. I seen it and thought, oh, that's that mist. That's that. I personally think, from what the experience I've got, it depends on the atmosphere of the evening, for example. Right. If it's damp, you are going to get that kind of mist. If it's dry, you're not. And that's when you've got to explain, well, what is it? Yeah. But if I can find them, I've got some which. Is shaped shapes, you know what I mean? Yeah, like orbs, isn't it? Yeah, exactly like that. Yeah, I can splice them in. I'll put them into the videos for people talking so people can see them. I do a lot of debunking when I'm up there because obviously I'm a thousand feet elevation, so you get sometimes you sat in the clouds. So just, then those are the nights where I don't bother taking photographs unless I'm just taking a random. See if I can get anything like you do, you know. If I get the urge to take photographs, then I will. But nine times out of ten, I'm probably photographing the moon because it's beautiful up there, you know, you that eye up. Like that. Yeah, exactly like that, yeah. And I'll splice mine in now so you can see him. Not the man. Yeah. It surrounds him all the time. Thank God for that. It's not just me, then. Or... Oh. That. Yeah, you have to. You're gonna have to send me them so I can splice them in and people can see. It. I can see it there. Exactly that. That's it. Yeah, but look how tall that one is. Mm. Yeah. Oh. It's tiny. It, it looks like the fae. Yeah, exactly. It does. It looks like the yeah, fae. Exactly. Yeah, I don't see that. I understand. I can. I'm on board with that straight away. I see, I've seen it in a shape, and you're not going to believe this, John. It was an ass and a pair of legs running away in in that cloudy smoke, and it just shot across the road. And I said to Matt, "Matt, did you see that then?" And he went, "Yeah." And I went, "What is it?" And he went, "It's heat haze." I went, "Is it degrees?" He went, "Well, it's the rain." I said, "It's not raining." He went, "Debbie, shut up! I'm just trying to pretend I didn't see it." And it just ran off up the hill, like a little boggity thing it was, but you could just see the back end of it. So if it's in Cornwall, they call it a Cornish pixie, wouldn't they? Yes. A little pixie. Oh. Do you know, we get reports of them, John, even modern day ones. Oh, yeah. yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Quite, from quite erudite, competent people. You'd be amazed how many people see the thing. And not all of them are tiny. Some of them are six foot tall, you know, and that brings my interest in with, like, Bigfoot and the Wood Woos. Is that what we are describing when we're describing the fae that are six foot tall and hairy and look like an ape or a man? That's what I saw. That was my introduction to the world of Bigfoot, was this bloody face in a bush that just lent out at me like this. Can't have been there, Johnny. Cannot have been there. Been physical impossibility that he was there. But he looks as flesh and blood as you are to me now. And six other people have seen it from 1950 to 2021. So I know I've been boxed off in... Bigfoot and the wood road. To say, you can't say it doesn't exist. No, you can't. Right. I personally believe they've actually got the evidence. Yeah, I do. And they've kept it. They won't release it. Be abject panic. Yeah. I mean, if you look at, what is it, Curtis Skinwalker Ranch. 
Mm. Yeah, exactly. Now they're getting very close. And all of a sudden, they've got the helicopters flying around them every hour. Mm. You know, things like that. I mean, I'm, that isn't here, obviously, it's in America, but I reckon the government have got all the evidence, but they just don't release it. Yeah. It's it's, the people. It's to do with money. Follow the money. If they admit that there is an eight-foot creature, elemental, physical being, whatever name you want to give it, roaming round in our woodlands, it shut tourism down for a start, so you've got no dog walkers, no hikers, no one going in, no one going in them trails. You'd have to put land away for them. You'd have to, you know, accept that they're there and put land. They're not going to do any of that. What oh. I see is where we have reports of them, within about 18 months, those areas are bought and marked private, or they bought and marked as areas of special scientific interest, meaning I'd have to get a a, a permit to go into them. What, here? Yes, in the UK. Uh, yeah. Right, in the States, they just put signs up. Please stick to the pathway. Big country, yeah. big foot country. Did they do? Stop them going camping, hiking, running, cycling, or anything no. else. Oh, no. Just education, public and education. Gardens. Mm -hmm. right. Look what they do. Going in the house, does it? It just, they're everywhere. I haven't worked in a country yet that doesn't have um, either a history or um, folklore of a tall, hairy giant that lives within the woods that's almost like a caretaker. Mm -hmm. um, and he's used to scare you, for, you know, don't wait to the woods, the, the wood roots. It's different names across the planet, but basically describing the same figure. Um, what I really want to go and look at, and I've got to admit, I haven't looked it up yet, Sherwood Forest. Four reports to Sherwood Forest. Um, most sane one, lady who's a civil servant, half past five, driving home from work. Normal day, dead normal, nothing out of the ordinary, not psychic, none of that. Driving down the road and off to the left-hand side, there is what she describes as a tall caveman-looking thing and a shorter one of it, a shorter version, almost like father and son. And they just step back into the greenery, so you know they no longer see them. That's what it was like for me. It just step back into the greenery, and I've heard other witnesses say it as well. It melded into the green, or it just faded away into the green, almost like the green man, this peeping face that we see. So, for me, Sherwood Forest has a lovely feel. I was there about two years ago. Really, really nice feel. But there are a number of black dog reports. Which tells me there's burial there somewhere. There's a oh maybe a burial mound, burial something along the lines. I don't mean a modern cemetery. I mean an ancient burial within that woodland. Very hard to believe that there wouldn't be. Mm. Because normally when we see a black dog, it's to do with death, and I don't mean a harbinger of death. They tend to be found at places of death, like ancient barrows, you yeah. know, old henges, things like that. Things where we used to worship and no longer do. It, and the the energy can go negative, it, you know. To say that I mean, show us forests, ancient forests. Mm -hmm. To say there's no burial places here, the amount of battles, the amount of fights, the amount of outlaws, everything else in there. Right? It's got to be. Yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be. And it's it's it used to be um cover the basically most of England. I mean, I know it's a small area now compared to what it was like. But we still get reports in the little woodlands around it that used yeah. to be part of it, which tells me that it's the either the land energy, so the ley lines, and they're using that to move in and out, or it's a physical route of some kind. That, so there would be a resource involved or, you know, something they needed. When people see them, they tend to see males. Very, very rare that you'll hear of a female uh, or breasts or anything that kind of... I think there's three reports in the UK where they actually mention breasts. Other than that, it's large, strapping males. So if it's physical, are they just moving? And we are unfortunately in the wrong place at the wrong time when we see them. I don't know. What oh. expedition? Um, no, I don't watch any of the programmes. Um, 
different to things like Finding Bigfoot and the hillbilly kind of things, yeah? Mm -hmm. This is, one of them's a oh, I primatologist. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. You've got a survivor and you've got a Bigfoot researcher. Mm -hmm. And you've got one that stays out of it. That yes. Gets all the reports. And they do it scientifically. They work on an, a logarithm that tells yeah. what area the Bigfoot are going to be in due yeah. to things and everything else. And they go there and they actually plan and work at it scientifically and everything else to find one. Mm. Uh, the evidence they've had has been pretty good. Yeah. Like nothing stupid. But no, I know what you mean. Uh, Not running around with a bloody 20 man camera crew and. Ah. Mm. They, one, they go in a pair and the other one goes off on his own. So he has one cameraman, the pair has one cameraman. That's it. Yeah. But they've got this thing on thermal camera. Right? And yeah, it's a big red box. Full stop. That's all it was. All it looked like. And they sent it away to this world number one expert on apes and primates. Yeah. And he sent it away. He, he was God's man. He sent it away to somebody else to put the stick man on it because it was moving. Yeah. Yeah, to farm at it. And then he said, got it sent back. And he phoned them up and said, well, what have we got? He says, well, unless you've got something like a gorilla that's 10 foot tall and climbs over trees, mm -hmm. that obviously. right? He says, you found a Bigfoot. He said, yeah. but you better come and look for yourself. So he went there and it was. The actual thing you saw, it walking and everything else, he... He works with the police as well, this other bloke. Yeah, exactly that, yeah. He was saying, if you look, the heat on the head is not there. It's all the... in the body. Yeah, it's central mass. Yeah. Now, if you, because they sent the bloke that had it on the camera over to the same place to do a size recognition. Yeah, to, yeah, to get them comparison. And how can we check the size? This is easy. The four posts there. So if we find an image on that taking where those four posts are and you will see the size of whatever it was that was on the camera and then you will see the size of the bloke yeah the bloke was that big the thing was like Huge. absolutely enormous and he said we can't say the definite big foot no but i think it's going to be the closest most people will ever get to it to the bits of patter. I could drag one here now, John, and put it on camera and people would still say I'd hoaxed it. I'd faked yeah. it in some way. I don't believe there are times. That's the problem with people. You see, I have no... I've seen it myself. That's the only thing I can say. I've seen it myself, so I know it's out there. You don't spend 41 years making that your main priority like I have unless it had a profound effect on my life. Yeah, I've seen I have... Sorry? Seen the picture you have drawn. Oh, he's, I still cannot look at his face in my head. I can't do it. So, so it's every now and again, people will send me a photograph and say, Deb, can you have a look at this? And I say, no, I can't. Because it, it triggers me. It really, I can still go back to that fear. I have to get a real handle on it. I, like you, um, I have a job. I'm not like a, I've not spent my life getting paid to be a paranormal expert, you know, investigator. I had to work. I got a single woman with kids. And one of the things I was really good at is geo profiling. And geo profiling is a system where you set up a number, let's do it on, say, a burglar. Most burglars will commit crime within five miles of their home address. So if you can plot those crimes on a map, you can narrow in and find out where his comfort zone is, right? So I realised I could do that with sightings of Bigfoot, and that's what I did. Mm. So every time one comes in, I put it on a map because I want to see if there's a pattern forming, if I can see a route moving or anything like that. And then I've spent 40 years studying whatever I can on them, just drinking it up, just trying to get all of it. And I still don't have any answers, um, but I know they're real. And I know people see them because I speak to them all of the time. And you told me, uh, we were speaking yesterday and you told me about a guy who was a biker and he ended up crying. He, he's, he's The paranormal investigator was so open with him 
and told him why he was upset was because his mum had passed away. And he were crying. I speak to grown men who are like six foot seven, built like bloody Vikings, who can't drive that road anymore because they're terrified about what they saw at night. They don't want to see it again, you know, to be faced with it again. They don't want to see it again. No. Yeah, that's how can you call somebody a liar, basically, that refuses to go back down it? That's it. That's your pure, utter fear. Yeah. That's what it was for me. Fear. Fear ruled my life. It ruled my life. I didn't take the kids away. I didn't take them camping. I fished every river in England with my dad. Every river in England, but not after 15. I stopped. I won't go on holiday with them. I won't go wherever they went. I refuse to go stay with me now. And I were out. My mum and dad moved into the countryside. No, no. I were out and in tower blocks as quick as I could get out. I just no. I think it ended probably ended my first marriage. I never told him. I didn't trust him enough to tell him. I didn't. I didn't trust him enough to tell him. It was when I met Mark. You know that when he said to me that picture that I had drawn. I was just going through, I, I was speaking with a witness <clears throat> and what I tend to do with him, John, is I'll say, let's go online and see if you can find anything that looks a little bit like it. Just give me somewhere to start. So you get a lot of photos of Pate, the big, you know, the big foot that people say. And this witness is sending me these images and as I'm flicking through, there he is. <clears throat> and I just threw the, the laptop out crying, I had snot running the whole nine yards. Mark's like, what's wrong? And I was like, that's him. That is him. How they got that photo of him? How have they done it? And it was a photo of it that a number of witnesses have put together from <clears throat> Sykesville in America. Sorry, this is fair, this. And um, it, was, it wasn't it was him, John, but it could have been his brother or his cousin. It was like looking into that face again. It was just, oh, I just couldn't do it. And then he said to me, right, Deb, that's it. You either put it away for good and walk away from it or you run at it like you do everything else. Just run at it yeah. and see, you know, see what you can do. And then obviously I had that accident and that put me in bed for eight years. So I had that eight year to kind of hone my other senses and skills because my legs didn't work and my arm didn't work and all of that. For 18 months, I flat in the bed with a mirror there. So I, you just put your makeup on. Terrible. Yeah, I know all that. You know, I tell you, makeup. But honestly, it just I feel like my life has led me to this point. I've been trained specifically for this bloody job my entire life. Yeah, as have you. Well, I'm not sure about. <clears throat> feels like it, and it certainly sounds like it, and it certainly is more and more coming that way. Mm. Yeah, with the technology I, and everything else we've got. <coughs> so. I got with a TV company, Finding Bigfoot, about 2015. When it's come to the UK and interview the UK witnesses. And at that time, the map had, had the map going probably 20 years at that point. And they came over and what they said to me was, right, we want all your research, give us your map, give us everything, and we might give you an, an a mention in the show. Don't get blocked. No, 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 no. That's not happening. And I was glad I pulled out because they went out and met a certain team. And wouldn't you know, the day before they went out, they only went and found a footprint, didn't they? An absolutely perfect footprint. Not found anything in 19 years, but the day before the CV company go out, we've got this amazing footprint. And I thought, oh, I'm so glad I backed out of that. Yeah. Yeah, which leads us on to a touchy subject. Not touchy for me. For me, you say whatever you want. Like <laughs> <laughs> you have also had an experience where you've had to kind of out, um, shall we say, a little less than honest paranormal team. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna make me do it like pulling teeth, aren't you? Uh, a team that many folk in the UK will have heard of. And they're now in America. But let's just say, not everything you see on TV is real. Let's start there with it. Yeah. It's not, is it? Better way. No money, 
No ghosts, no TV. No, nothing. How do they get? Anybody that's been in an investigation will know that you do not get anything on 99.9% of your investigations. Right? If you go to any investigation expecting it to happen, the slightest little touch, the slightest little knock, you're off. You're screaming like the hyenas. You're off. Yeah. Right? But however, this particular program were absolute out and out fakes. Now, we do not like fakes. No. At all. Now, when I say fakes, we used to get asked to go after them and clear of them. Yeah. Because they'd messed it up. Pendle Hill, for example. Right? Everything they found on Pendle Hill. Demonic witches and all the rest of it. Biggest load of rubbish ever. Nobody lived on Pendle Hill for three, four hundred years. It was yep. to Wales, his hunting ground. Ah. The actual witches of Pendle were in a little village, and if I remember right, it's called New Church. Right. One of them is buried in the churchyard. Why haven't we actually found the grave? Then there's a quarry further down where they used to meet. Right. Titanic? Never. All right. I should think they were more scared of Satan than Satan would have been the death. You know, if they were the same as everybody else in that age. There were old women that knew a bit about herbs that could make yeah. a few concoctions that help with cold and whatever. Things like that. Right. I think we call them hatred, now. Yeah, that's, that's exactly why I am. All the wise women of the village. Yet, yeah, no, it was witchcraft. You know, they could fly and everything else. Really? What are they going to do? Jump on a 747 back in 1600? Yeah, okay. I can't fly. But no, everywhere they went, and I just went, no, they said, right. And then it was weird because it was like, put a bit of fishing line on a door, tied to a chair. It's amazing what you can get. You shut the door, chair folds it. Things like that. Yeah. Coins. They used to pay people to throw coins over the top. Yeah, and things like that. Now, yes, I had all the evidence from it from certain people. Mm -hmm. Big piles like this. Right. And one of the videos says about a certain person leaving and all the rest. I'm not going to say the name because I'm not sure on the legal thing side of it. Yeah. Right. But they are no longer on live TV. It is now recorded TV. But no, that was interesting. Just hate fans. Just, Don't make sense. I mean, we all fell for it. I fell for it in the beginning. I used to watch it with my daughters. But that's the big thing. No ghosts, no things, no money. Bye bye show. And I went to one called Chamberlain Manor, which yeah. is. I sent you the photograph of that. Yeah, you did. Yeah. All right. Now, Chamberlain Manor came out, and it's not just them. There's loads of people Chamberlain Manor. It's now actually shut down. Right? Where they were saying, oh, yeah, it's so haunted, it's so active, and all the rest of it. And we went there, and I went, hang on. This isn't even the Manor House. Manor House is like 100 yards further up the road, and it's still got all the gables around inside and things like that. It's just a normal little house that people live in. This was like the cow buyers with the farmer's house. Yeah, like the stock wins. Right? But they've made it so it looks like my house. And it had a hanging tree in the garden. And a little pool where people apparently had been murdered in the pool. Yet the pool was only made about 30 years ago. And there's a Victorian tip up the top of the hill. Right. Okay, so this went on and on and on. We went in, and I went, I'll go to it. But I've got to admit, Mark went in to do a talk with them all. And on in there, they've got a state room, right? And they've got a big oak table in it. And he put his hand on the tables. And you could literally see a line of orbs coming from one room into another, under the table, and coming up to him one at a time. 
Right. That is gospel truth. I've yeah. never seen anything like it. But it was quite clever. Angie had uh, different coloured orbs playing in one room. Like she just laid on the bed, the orbs were playing over her head. Right. It was quite interesting to watch. I mean, they are really good people they are. But she was saying, no, it doesn't mean to say it's haunted. Yes, they found a secret room and it had a body in it. Full stop. But yes, it's haunted, but it's by kids. Yeah, no, nothing satanic. Children. Yeah. We went down another time where another group were doing it. And we're thinking that. I went, yeah, I'll go down. And anyway, so I walked in, the kids just came straight up to me and they and spoke by the legs all the time. And this woman's talking away, going, yeah, there's this and that. And I said, yeah, all right, they're here. But we can't find them at the moment. I said, you won't. They're here. Yeah. And it went on and she goes, I'm going to give a few people some reasons. She turned around to give a few. And then she turned around to me. She goes, you've done a lot of work with things. I find it very difficult to read you. And I went, only because you can't. Yeah, only because you can't. And she goes, all right, well, I'll show you whether I can or I can't. And she went about Japan. I mean, what? And then she went on to China. I said, hang on a minute. I've never been to China. None of my family's ever been to China. Not even in the Second World War did they go to China or anything like that. And she went, well, this is what I'm getting. I said, well, you're getting it wrong. <laughs> I said, I'll tell you now. And for some unknown reason, I just reeled off a bit about her. She went, no wonder I can't read her. I said, you can't read me because you can't do it. And they had the group around them and everybody else, and they were laughing their heads off. And I said, you're searching for the things. I said, the kids are here. Yeah, they're already here. That is all there is, the three kids, and they are stood beside me. And I said, I'm going to let them go. And they went, and as they walked past, yeah, as they walked past the table, they did that. They knocked one of the things. Right. So it didn't do anything, but it just went, that's all it was. Yeah. And so it was like, just a warning, not a warning, just a thing to say, look, we know what he is, you don't, you haven't got a clue, behave. Yeah, yeah. And the one we did the investigation on with what we call war, we did do that live, and I think you've got a video of it with the pictures. Yeah. Came with the yeah. Oh, yeah. That was the one we came out at half past two, three o'clock in the morning, locked it all up and everything else. Got into the courtyard and I just turned around and went, click. Just like that. Click. Didn't even look. That's where the images in the window are. That's where that yeah. And that went viral as nobody would be ever be able to prove that is fake. Just, it is startling. It is absolutely startling. Yeah. Yeah, they could never ever prove that's fake because I've put an image of the house with the two photographs. And you know the bit that goes like that? Mm hmm Top window. Yeah. Oh, God. You know, I have a ladder and everything else. Yeah, exactly. But from the out inside, not the outside. Not just that. If we risk hoaxing a photograph or hoaxing a video, we put all of our hard work that we've put in for bloody decades you know, it's for me, it doesn't make sense. And I can never understand the hoax, so I don't get it. You know, I work with the people with trauma from their events, you know. So for someone to come along and, like, kind of make a bit of money off it for no reason, you know, just for a bit of entertainment on TV, it sickens me. It really does, because a lot of people tuned into that programme because they were looking for answers, weren't they, or that they were identifying, thinking, well, I'm picking up on that, I must be getting it right. And you think... Yeah. You're just selling them misinformation wrapped up in a big bow. It's just not right. It's just not done. Well, it is done, but it shouldn't be done. Yeah, it shouldn't be done. And it that's shouldn't. one of the reasons I've set combo up. Exactly. Because as the elder says, you've got now such an opportunity to have such a vast audience. There well, are hundreds of people. Like well, and you can, I won't tell you what they say. Mm. No, but I'll, I'll, I'll have a listen. There's hundreds of people like me, John, hundreds of us, who have really little small platforms who are trying to get the voice out there. And, like, YouTube just shut me down and shut me down and shut me down. And it's like, I want an alternative to that. 
I want an alternative where I can put my work in the way I want to do it without compromising myself or the people who are going to be listening to it. And honestly, for the price of less than a cup of coffee, you're going to be seeing ex- you'll see exclusive videos of me that I don't put anywhere else out there. I mean, I've, I've made one yesterday that it was just exclusive. It's just behind the scenes. It's just for Combo Box. And you're thinking you're probably going to be missing out on all of that. And not just me. All of the other people that are putting their content yeah, on that. It could be a subscription thing. Mm-hmm. Well, I said, we've got to talk about this combo box media yet. But I haven't decided for that. No, okay, I'll leave it with you. <laughs> no, it's all right. I'm going to wait until all you're right. ready. It is. I think YouTube charges £10 a month, don't I? For premium, something like that. Yeah. Right, two ninety nine. That's all it's going to be. Two ninety nine a month. They can watch what they want. As much as they want, or whatever else. Whenever they want. Yeah. And it also, it weeds out the trolls. I, I find paying a, paying a small subscription means you don't get the multitude of um, Roger heads that you get in normal free sites because they won't pay the 2 99 subscription, you know. And it, to me, it's silly. I'm not a watcher of TV, me, but I do like to chill out with a paranormal vid every now and again, you know. YouTube's got a bit samey. It's all the same. And it just... I had one the other day, John. Guy, can you tell me what this orb is through the light? I said, yeah, it's used to the side with the torch in your hand, shining it on your car. You see the glare it's giving off. That's your window because you're shining your torch through your double glazed window. I thought, don't... Just don't. I deal with enough people like that all the time trying to con me. Yeah. All picture I've ever got was we were doing an investigation in a little woodland in Cornwall, just, I think it was just outside of Red Roof, I think. It was that area, all right? Mm. And we came across a bridge. Now, that bridge was used for the thieves and every, back in the day where they used to have the hands chopped off. Oh, it, right. That, oh. that was the bridge you used to chop the hands on. But we went into the woods, and yeah, it was interesting right until you got to this thing like uh i can't remember the corn not sphinx the other thing oh not obelisk the big one the needle like a needle yeah yeah call a particular thing isn't it right and we had some mist come there in the shape of a horse right. and if i had all the photos i had on facebook then yes i'd have all this <laughs> right and Angie picked it up. Was it Angie? I think it was, actually. She picked it up, but it was... The horse was Packet. Now, Packet is a local paper. Right. Right, but it wasn't then. It was a boat, and the horse pulled the boat. That was Uh, it. And the needle on the top, all of a sudden, a massive, big, white, blue orb right on the very top of it. No other thing around it, just this one thing, like a big lighthouse light. Yeah, big beacon. Yeah, and it just came up. Absolutely amazing. See, we do. We have strange jobs, you and I, but it's a wonderful job to have, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But then, def- what are orbs? People say it's dust. Is it? Some. Um, you know, some of it's dust. Some of the stuff I get sent is dust, but there's those anomalies that I cannot account for. Then you think in throwing it on the floor and trying to photograph the dust. You can't. It doesn't photograph. But how no. does be done? I've seen them in the daylight. A lady from Colbin Forest in Scotland sent them to me. White orb crossing the path in front of her so often that she filmed them. Um self illuminated in the daytime. Yeah. Cannot account for that in any way, shape or form. One of the hotels we did in Cornwall. Right, and it just literally came along the corridor, got to the end, turned around, went back again. Intelligent, intelligent yeah, movement. It's got to be all over. Yeah, yeah exactly. It follows a path, doesn't it? It follows whatever breath's taking it. Can. It's right. Mm. Yeah, Bodmin Jail's full of them. I've been to Bodmin Jail. All oh, right, you've got a photograph of mine on, in Bodmin Jail. Yeah, yeah, I have been there. Yeah. Uh, me and Mark, who was the Know who the medium is there now, but Mark was not Mark, but you're going to make another one. 
uh, we were out in the courtyard. We came back half one, two o'clock in the morning, but we just went out for a smoke with part of the group. Mm-hmm. And we don't know why, but we both turned around at exactly the same time. And across the courtyard, we walking a bloke with a big cape and a hood on. And I went, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Went, so, that's what you came to see. Right. But the hospital part is the building. As you drive into the courtyard, or you walk into the courtyard, the hospital is on the left-hand side. And they will not allow anybody into that. Right. No, mm. it, and they just will not let you in it. Oh, I need to get down to Cornwall. Come up, like, oh, well. get, one, get one of these investigations with you. Got, <laughs> just outside of, it will be Texas. Mm. The church. Uh, behind that church is where the Mothman. Right, yeah, Mona, yeah. But behind that, right, there's an ancient oak wood. Right. Some so in any space. Yeah. And it'll explain whether you want to call him an owl man or a mothman. It'll yeah. explain exactly. You walk into it, full of owls, so you see the red eyes. Yeah, the, that, that does get com- um, reported quite often, this red oh, eye. Wood in the bay at the bottom. Right. Uh, so, explain. I I cannot. I cannot. And we've not even touched on dreams yet, have we, and all of the other things we've got to talk about. Oh, yeah. So, I'm going to have to bring you on for part two. <laughs> so I'm definitely going to have to be a part two. I am going to close it down for now, but don't go anywhere, listeners, because, as I say, at the end of this video, you will see a number of John's videos and interviews are there, and you'll also find links to Combo Box TV and to John's email so you can contact him yourself. I'm going to hit my sources in uh, America and Canada and Russia and get them over to Combo Box too um, and get, get them uploading. And I'll be having a, a private chat with John on Thursday evening with him and his crew. So um, we'll just, if anything comes from that, I'll let you know. And if there are any messages for me in that bay, I'll tell you about it next time we meet. Good night, everyone. It's gone quiet. Spooky Spooky music. (laughs) (laughs) Right, welcome to Haunted Cornwall. All right, from Penwith Radio down here in beautiful Penzance today. And it really was gorgeous. Never mind here, waves crashing, it's flat calm. It was beautiful. There weren't any. All right, welcome to Z Talk in Canada. All right, hope you're all here to listen. Any most haunted fans in the chat rooms or on Facebook? Ah! Did you hear that? It's fucking. <laughs> Something hit me on the head. I'm sorry. I possess. Sorry. <laughs> Fling yourself hey, behave, behave. I'm we sorry. Mustn't. We mustn't. We yeah. mustn't. I haven't said a word. I'm just... Right. Here we go then. Chris Conway. He has left Most Haunted. All right. And I will reiterate, this is not the show's views necessarily. Mm-hmm. It is also definitely not the station views, okay? Right. I'd like to start by thanking you guys for all the love and support you have given me since the start of my most haunted adventure. However, I feel I can no longer continue as most haunted resident medium. I appreciate the chance given me to work in television and I plan to continue to do so in some other show. I had the decision to make between fame and money versus my beliefs and principles. I won't go into details, but I couldn't be part of something I didn't trust. Too many things were happening contrary to what I was picking up, or at times picking up no spirit activity at all. I thought it was wrong to agree with the fans' criticisms of the show while picking up a paycheck from Antics Productions. I were either the normal investigation group in the world, or the tappings, 
stone throwing, etc., <laughs> was not paranormal. This, of course, is my opinion and is nowhere any accusation of fraud on my part. My decision was made for me when I realised that on receiving my sheet on a Friday, the venue was being written on it for this series, or the venues, I should say. I am strongly against any advanced knowledge of where I am investigating, unless it is made clear I know. I opened the files and looked at my hotel while to ignore the rest of my call sheet. This made it feel like I wasn't fully involved. I also feel that I wasn't involved enough in the actual investigations. If I didn't manage to pick up all the information in the first 15 minutes, I'd lost my chance. Even bringing stuff through at the hub wasn't being aired. This, I felt, was not fair on myself or the fans. I understand that many people don't believe in mediumship and feel we should not have been used on the show. I respect this viewpoint and I feel that every belief system has to have a balanced argument. If everyone was a believer, it would be open to abuse. However, if everyone was a sceptic, it would mean that we may miss some important phenomena. I realise that this statement may invite some muddling from antics productions, but it is my opinions and the truth as I see it. I feel that my fans, and most haunted fans in general, deserve to hear my truthful reasons for leaving the show. I refuse to walk away with an excuse of why I left, in the hope it will prevent my name being tarnished by others. Mm -hmm. Blessings, Chris. All right, so what's your thoughts on that? Well, I just think what he says about money versus integrity is, is what being a medium is all about. And I think that's absolutely fantastic. So well done to him. That's what I think. Oh. Well, I, I've actually read that because although it was taken down off Chris's website, you can track it down. I did. And um, <laughs> it, it is interesting. And I, I know what to respond to, really, because I, I think it's worth hearing Carl's letter. Mm. The one thing I, I will, and this is going to be a repeating uh, refrain from me, Skeptic doesn't mean closed, mm -hmm. and I think sometimes we use the word, the word skeptic meaning somebody who's closed off, and in fact skeptics are actually open to, but want to explore. So that's the only thing that I would immediately come back on. But I agree 100% with you, Angie, mm -hmm. and I know that, you know, we've spoken about this before, Des, there is this thing about integrity mm -hmm. now, and you have to have that, and um, I mean, hats off to the guy yeah. that he's actually coming up and saying, well done, you know. Right, straight away. Now, I don't know who this is, Tim J. I I really don't know. Can we point out, and I want this on air, Chris Conway only did three investigations before he got invited to Most Haunted. His team that he created is UK Ghost Hunters. Then you've got Danny comes on mm -hmm. and he goes, who gives a beep about a crappy TV show? Mm. Right? Lone Star, he stood in his power and kept his dignity in a trust, or sorry, in a show that has lost theirs. It's got nothing to do with the work we do. Mm. All right? There's nothing on GUK at the moment about it. They're on about something totally different, which they always do. And I think it's just in the, that comment about it's only a show, but yeah. actually it's an influential show. Yes, it is. Just experience, mm. either investigations, yeah. which is more open about it, and I'm sure from your point of view, Absolutely. it's their first experience of some kind of mediumship. Mm. And, and so we both have the same kind of arguments mm. about it, perhaps. It's all very negative. Exactly. And it's all very from both sides. Yeah. From both sides. Yeah. If it, if it came forward and said we are an entertainment show and we're going to give you a spook ride, no problem. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Anyway. Right, and there is a hell of a lot of evidence, all right, which we haven't given permission to talk about, mm. so we can't really go into that. No. All right, and I have got it, by the way. Mm -hmm. I've got so much evidence, mm -hmm. right, which is on paper, it is not factual. It, right, it, it is that's interesting. what you've got to say. I mean, just one other thing I'll say, and then I just want to be very careful how I phrase this. and. Um, it is interesting that Chris uh, Conway left the show mm. with certain gripes. I find it interesting about maybe how other people stuck with <coughs> it so long when yeah, the, the, the same things were happening. Money. Yes, money, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, from Tim on GUK. I've lost it again. It's an influential show. It makes everyone new to the paranormal either think we're all nutters mm -hmm. or the opposite and they will have an eventful night every time. Yeah. yeah. All right. It would be a good idea to post some news and updates every month to keep you informed of all things MH, and this is the first. How convenient. <laughs> Here is an old but current topic. Usually, I wouldn't bother commenting on the ramblings of an ex-most haunted employees or the silliness of the forums. 
but because of so many inaccuracies recently, I've been asked as a special favour to make a comment. Firstly, the accusation made by the alleged medium, Chris Conway, are false. Let us... Firstly, his contract finished on the last live series shoot, and I am more than happy to publish his contract on the net. He was never asked to be a part of Prague, and it is this that has obviously started his negative responses. He was sent a courtesy email on the 1st of the 2nd, 2010, along with everyone else. He was never offered a position on it. Uh, shortly after the email was sent, we decided to use alternative people and that role. No other correspondence was said or given, and no inclusion in the live was offered or inferred. The fact that we have been obtaining the services of other individuals for some time will be all too clear on the live. Any comment to the contrary is a lie. We have never held the locations a secret on live shows, as with the very nature of the show, these things get out anyway. And we have never hidden the fact. If the alleged medium uses any information prior to a shoot for their own advantage, then that is only fraud on their behalf. Complete loss of trust with everyone they work with. We can only trust them, we can't control them. I am not going to go into the reasons why we decided not to use Chris, but I feel that it wouldn't be professional to do so. Safe to say that if anyone goes to Lincoln Prison, have a look at the first room on the right where you shall see all of the information given out as psychic on the written for all to see. That is fact, and something which no one, even you believers out there, can deny. We are all shocked and saddened at the things being said by someone that we plucked from obscurity, showed nothing but respect and kindness to, and have given a platform to launch their career. He isn't the first to show dishonour, and sadly, I'm sure he won't be the last. To all those that have supported us, send a hand of gratitude and deep thanks for all of your kind messages, which makes us realise that we are doing the right thing. We have always made most haunted for the millions of true fans in the UK and worldwide that make this the most successful paranormal brand in the world, and we will continue to do so. sleep inside Margam Castle nice. and the amount of spirit in the end I told the uh, two little kids sitting on the stairs to shut up and go away. <laughs> I grabbed my arm and pulled me and I looked around to see who it was expecting somebody physical. There's nobody there. Oh, no. <laughs> thanks very much. Who does ghost investigations here? Do you not generally find that most activity stops about two o'clock in the morning in any case? That's probably yeah, because they use why? the energy of the yeah. people that are there. Yeah. You know, they're expecting a noise, any noise. Yeah. yeah. Yvette. Ah! Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. If you've got public in there rather than the team that calls in regularly, then uh, because we go on a regular basis, then we're looking for something more than the obvious knock or bang. Okay, not, not a ghost, but a long term outbound spirit. Just into a place. They become adept at drawing on the energy around them. They go up in the evening, they feel creepy, they're fear feeding. Get people to come to sing Ringa Ringa Rosa. Actually singing it while they're playing at our shows, not knowing why they want to actually play that. It was through the Black Death that the song was created. Mm. And 
And then like, children um, used to play the falling down bit, not knowing that it was to do the falling down mm -hmm. there. Yeah. <laughs> but then children like macabre things anyway, and that's why we have such fun on Halloween, isn't it? So. She would pull the cheek and push without touching, and it's the same with spirit. Well, when we got to the answer the Crowley sellers, um, and there's quite a large team of mediums in there, two things come through which completely contradicts all the mm. urban myth that follows the house. Why is it people always looking for negative stuff? Yeah. Why is yeah. there always a body <laughs> under the floor? Why is there always a this? Why is there anything good? And I think so often when people go on ghost hunts or investigations, they're all looking for doom, gloom and grim stuff. But it's like a lot of pubs are haunted because people loved going there. I commend the TV programmes for the way that they've actually brought the paranormal and everything to the public eye. In as much as I don't think they're promoting spirit contact at all, they're just creating some sort of, you've got to be scared of ghosts. I've, I've been hit, I've been slapped around the head and whatever, but then I do get a lot of negative spirits following me home. Probably I deserve it, I don't know. Millions of people know about paranormal, right? As far as I'm concerned, the sensation is that there's no ghosts, there's no money. Yeah, that's it. So they are faked. End the conversation about it. You know, I don't see how it's always about negativity and doom and gloom myself. A liquid open back pendle was absolutely ridiculous. Mm. When we went there, we never met one witch. No. Honestly, do it. They've actually got to work harder because everybody thinks they're fake. You've got free will on earth and you've got free will in the spirit yeah. world. The second you die, you're exactly the same person. So if you're nasty two faced git when you're alive, you're a nasty <laughs> two faced git when you're dead. The vibration, oh, I want a communication, I want to connect to someone, they're very likely to get company. Oh, how did they die? Breath. <laughs> <laughs> now, if a good medium gives a group protection, they're protected. What happens if a fake medium gives it? I mean, you don't have a plumber to do the electrician job, do you? I, I, I really don't believe that. I'm going to stick my hand up here. I really Sue's don't believe that. Yeah. I'm a biggest fan of Sue's medium <laughs> shit, but I don't use protection. Much. I don't use protection at all. I don't yeah. ask my guys to save my life because I think you need to take no. responsibility. No. Okay, no spirit's truly lost. They can refuse to believe mm. that they're dead. Yeah. What she believes don't matter. It's what you do with it that counts. Taking it from a medium's point of view is that you're more likely to see what's coming than the person that isn't. Mm. But sometimes, I do believe, sometimes you're allowed negative experiences that are really quite powerful, so you learn. All mediums are psychics, <coughs> and all psychics are mediums, isn't it? See, I disagree with that, because I'm a medium, but I'm a really poor psychic. What's the difference between, a, between a, being psychic and being... A psychic picks up the vibrations. A spiritualist medium communicates with those on the other side. Right. To prove life after death. That's all the medium's there to do at the end of the day. No, it's good because it's, I, I think it's really healthy to be sceptic. Before I got got, I was very sceptic. And I think that's healthy. Because if you believe any old rubbish, you could get your life in the right place. Yeah. And that's because you develop that psychic ability to sense danger. <coughs> that's a brilliant point. If you want to detect a spirit, it should be a detected person. Yeah, exactly. if it the Russians have. It's called a breathalyzer. <laughs> 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 The Russians do an awful lot of stuff. Mm. Yes. There's been a telly, so I know it's true. But there is no scientific stuff that says what spirit energy consists of. The people that were dying, he asked their permission if they could have them on a, a bed that weighed them. And it lost, on, on pain of death, as soon as the silver cord was parted, they lost about two ounces in weight. And um, as you were saying about psychic mediums, I don't really know what I am, to be honest, because uh, my friends say sometimes I'm psychic, but I do work with spirit. I do believe I work with spirit. You still grieve, mm -hmm. badly. Mm -hmm. You're a little bit like me. Mm -hmm. You have to find your own nudge. I know sometimes listening to other people and telling you, it helps in, in a way, mm -hmm. but you need to learn to do your way. They have a crystalline, and that's when they started doing uh, electronic voice phenomena, when they were using the crystal radios. I've been here for six years and I've had three star children in that time. Stop smoking, weight loss, anything that you sort of consciousness that you're trying to aim to, listening to a certain type of frequency can really get you into a certain desired state. Right, and we had occultists, pagans, Wiccans, Satanists, Christians, all sat around the time table, all having a decent debate. Mm, 2012, the Armageddon, the disaster. Mm. What an absolute load of cosmos. 
the collective consciousness of people will actually create something negative. Mm. Yeah. Uh, more and more of them are waking up now. Mm. They're fed up of being told what to do, when to do, how to do it. Thank you all very much mm. for coming. I hope you've all enjoyed it. Because I know we have. Oh, yeah, that's a great time. It's been <laughs> <laughs>